I grew up playing heavy music, and people use the expression folk punk around what I do rather too much for my taste. But to the extent that I'm a kid who learned how to sing and play guitar in a punk rock context and I'm now trying to do a version of folk music, there's a fair cop in there somewhere. I certainly sing louder than almost anybody from the folk scene, which is just because I learned to sing in a hardcore band. And then I do play pretty hard when I get going. There's a kind of physicality to the way that I play, which comes from growing up with that kind of music. I've spent the last 27 years of my life playing the guitar and playing the acoustic guitar, and it's very much at the point of instinct now. Still, to this day, I mean, I can pick up a guitar and just waste like three straight hours just kind of noodling. I'm not a particularly virtuoso guitar player, and I tend to play in standard tuning. And yet, every day, I find a little transition or a little lick that I hadn't thought of before. When I was a kid, my mum and dad listened to sort of classical music and church music and uh, there was a piano, that piano in fact, in the house, none of which really grabbed me in any meaningful kind of way. And then uh, I stumbled across the music of Iron Maiden. I sort of couldn't quite believe that a band could be that cool. And the other thing, the Freddie Mercury tribute concert was on TV shortly after that. And you know, it opens with Metallica, followed by Guns N' Roses, followed by like, you know, there's Sabbath, Queen, Zeppelin. I kind of just, as, as kids tend to do, disappeared down a wormhole of listening to that kind of music, and the very first thing I wanted to do was, was to join in. It would be a victory or a spine of civil war. That Christmas, my mom and dad got me the Argos electric guitar starter pack. You know what I mean? Black and white strap copy, which I still have upstairs, in fact. You know, it comes with a strap and a lead and a little 30 watt amp. And uh, yeah, that was the beginning. Me and my sister, both of my sisters, on kind of family beach holidays, we'd sit around a campfire on the beach and I would play the guitar. The thing that was kind of formative of that, the seed that was planted, was that in that moment, I wasn't like playing a show for people. I was leading the group of our friends in song. And if we are, it's just a dust. In the end, what's left of us? I grew up with mostly American music, actually. I mean, even within the great sort of punk rock debate, you know, I always tended towards Black Flag and Dead Kennedys and Minor Threat more than Sham 69 and the Pistols, you know? Although that's changing as I get older. And indeed, then within kind of acoustic music, you know, um, Springsteen, Neil Young. Having said all of that, like, it was important to me right from the word go that what, what I recognize in the work of someone like Tom Petty is, is um, an honest appreciation of who they are and, and their background and their context. And for me to be inspired by that doesn't mean trying to sound like I'm from New Jersey, it means trying to sound like I'm from where I'm from. History's been leaning on me lately I can feel the future breathing down my neck After years of playing in Million Dead, which was a kind of hardcore, post-hardcore kind of band. I stumbled across a scene in North London based around a bar called Nambuka in Holloway, which was based around a guy called Jay Beans on Toast, who with his acoustic guitar would play these fun little songs with three chords that were about us, you know, and about things that happened last week. And I was in the middle of trying to write complex uh, political analogies about Polish communism and stuff. And there was something so direct about Jay's songwriting and it really kind of reawoke that thing about sitting around a campfire on a beach. and. There was just something so, um, I mean, I guess punk almost in a way, but there's something so direct about, obviously you can plug an acoustic guitar in, but most of the time at Nambuka, we'd all just be sat around a table playing songs to each other with no sort of amplification. And there was something really um, powerful about that to me. 
Like cackles ranged upon a cornered cat The acoustic guitar is the great uh, democratic instrument of the 20th century. There's a moment in the 1920s where acoustic guitars start getting mass-produced in America, and it's easier to play than the accordion, uh, it's more portable than the piano, and it's a fuller accompaniment than the fiddle. So, um, here's the cat. <laughs> because it's so easily accessible, you can pass a guitar around a room full of people quite happily, and I've spent a lot of my life doing that. And it, and it just really kind of removes a lot of, not only mystique, but kind of aristocracy, almost, I want to say, about music making. You know, it becomes uh, something that's very kind of public property. My musical idols, particularly as far as my solo career goes, are, tend to be kind of troubadoury, songwritery types. One of the biggest ones for me is Towns Van Zant, who is a Texas songwriter. Um, I have his initials tattooed on my wrist. Um, Town, Towns is huge for me. I mean, Springsteen deserves a hefty mention. Loudon Wainwright is a huge one for me. I actually happen to own Loudon Wainwright's old guitar. It's upstairs. Um, it's a D'Angelico Archtop 1942, and it's a, it's a wonderful piece of wood. It's also, it's like, I take a lot of inspiration from my friends, you know, and people that I tour with. There's a lot of kind of learning going on in that environment, and I love it, it's just someone plays a chord and you're like, what is that chord? I need to know what that chord is, because it made me feel weird, and I haven't, I haven't got that one in my armory. There's a sort of living tradition thing going on there, do you know what I mean? Apologies first, it's been an age since I wrote you, I know I'm the worst, you know how I feel. A lot of people see writing music and songwriting particularly as being this thing that involves some <laughs> almost like platonic in, uh, investigation of the human spirit or whatever. And it does on some levels, but it also comes down to just kind of messing around with the guitar until you find something that sounds cool. To date, that's still a thing that, that I, I haven't run out of um, room to explore. To reach her, she might be my saviour. When I got my first guitar, it came with strings on, obviously, and um, I played it all the time. And then I broke my first string about two months later and was genuinely convinced that I'd broken the guitar and that I had to get a new one. I, didn't, I just genuinely didn't know that strings were a replaceable part of the instrument. This is how it begins. I became a kind of full-time guitar player when I went solo. I, I play, I've played guitar since I was a kid and I wrote a lot of the rest for Million Dead, but I didn't play guitar every, on stage every day until I was uh, touring as a solo artist. I then went through a very long and fraught battle with strings. So essentially, I, I broke strings all the time to the point that it was really quite destructive for my live show. And I got quite good at restringing guitar whilst talking to a crowd, uh, but it's, it's not. It's not what you want in the middle of a show. Um, and in particular, I used to break the G-strings on my guitars, and it took me bloody years to figure out what was going on with that. And the reason is that on a set of acoustic strings, your G-string is wound, which is not an electric, which means that because it has to be thin, the core of the G-string is actually the thinnest string on an acoustic set of strings. By the time I got to the point of being able to have a guitar tech in my life, namely somebody who knows a bit more about guitars than I do, we really set about trying to solve this problem and we went through a lot of different makes of string and particularly gauges of strings because initially, instinctively, I played really heavy strings and that was actually kind of, kind of misguided, actually. I don't necessarily think that thick strings give you a thick sound necessarily um, and also they're just so kind of heavy that I was playing them really heavily in order to kind of dig in to those huge strings that I was playing back then. And that meant that I was playing harder, which meant that I was hitting the strings harder, which meant that they would heat up more, and the heat and the, the percussiveness combined is the thing that will break the strings. I'm gonna sleep on the floor, I played a fair few shows, I'm gonna play more and all along the while. I was just trying to raise a smile. The sound that the actual strings make is more important for an acoustic player than an electric player, in my opinion. And that means that you can spend more time thinking about 
your alloy or um, indeed just your gauge generally and, and that kind of thing. These days, I don't break strings nearly as often, much to the joy of my guitar tech, Kyoho. But, uh, but it was a long journey kind of figuring all of that out. About nights and wrongs About finding that trail that leads away from everyone When I was a kid playing guitar, I used to play Ernie Balls because I thought the word, they had like slinky and uh, heavy top, slinky bottom, no, slinky top, heavy bottom, and extra slinky and all that kind of thing. And I just thought it sounded and looked really cool. Um, and I loved the way that they had all the bands written on the back of the package. Um, I would spend many, <laughs> many long days reading that. And I have to say that on the day when I had my name on the back of a packet of Ernie Balls was, was a big day. You know, they, they, they do everything I need them to do. They sound great, they play great. But these are conditioned words About longing for the prairie and living in the suburbs Music's a form of communication and, and somebody much smarter than me has said at some point that it's arguably the most complex form of communication that we engage in as a species. But it's also, it's universal and you can play a song on an acoustic guitar to a toddler and, and they grasp what's going on. I spend a lot of time making the shows that I play into communal and welcoming and open places and to try and remove the imposition of the raised bit of flooring and the barrier at the front, you know? To me, music is interesting when it becomes a conversation rather than a monologue. Casting glances over my shoulder as I go Trying not to dwell on things I do not know I know my trade out on these boards with cowboy cords I know my trade out on these boards with cowboy cords I know my trade out on these boards with cowboy I know my trade out on these boards with cowboys.